welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, I actually want to do a review on a series that I just finished last week. I started it last week and finished it last week. And it is Alexandria House, the McLean Brothers series. Now, I want to say last year, I did a review on her um, Roman University series. And that was the first time I ever heard of Alexandria House and the first time I ever read her books and was just flabbergasted she has become my favorite 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 black romance author of like all times right now i mean she's like that high i love 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 her works and oh my goodness so when i went to look at my um audible i wanted to see if there was some um if they had some black romance you know books and when i looked on audible they had the mclean brothers i think um you guys had told me about the mclean brothers and said you should read that next when you do read alexandria house and y'all y'all was totally right oh my goodness y'all was right okay so let's just get started the first one is called let me love you and that one is dealing with joe walker and the rapper Big South, but his real name is Everett. And actually, Big South was in um, one of the Rumi University series. I think he was like related to Nadia or something like that. Because with her book, sometimes she connects. A lot of times she does connect like characters, you know, um, through like different books or whatever. I was listening to it. I'm like, oh, that's old girl's cousin. Look, like it's a real person. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so Joe, oh girl, her her story. Joe is a young woman. She works at a um, what is it like a oh is it a jewelry shop or whatever something like that, and it looks like she wants to like design jewelry. So she meet Big South, and he's kind of known like a womanizer, you know. She you know, and he like. The first time they meet, it ain't, it's not good. I think he, he call her, I don't, I'm not a hoe, but kind of like a side piece or whatever. She's like, uh-uh, I'm not nobody's side piece. So what are you talking about? But he, you know, clearly becomes attracted to her and you see, you know, their relationship. Joe's little past relationship is, is extremely dubious and it's just, it's a lot going on. Her ex-husband... His name's Sid, right? Yeah, Sid. And he left her when she was like six months pregnant or something like that. And he like, I don't want to be married, da, 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 da. So she's actually really taking, well taken care of because, you know, when he divorced her, he has money. So, you know, she gets child support payments and we're like a really good, you know, alimony. And her thing is like, I just want to, all her life, she wanted to be, you know, a wife and a mother. Then in comes Big South. You know, he swept her off of her feet. They get a relationship. But then he also has a kid. And his little relationship, he's, you know, divorced. And his relationship is also dubious. And his ex-wife, Esther, girl. It, whoo. Now, I rated this book, I gave it a four stars. And the reason why is, there was a, because I don't want to give it away. But there was a situation that happened between Joe and her ex-husband. Yeah, you would say, yeah, ex-husband's wife or whatever, where it was unnecessary. Because it was like, they had already been through a lot of stuff, you know, Joe and Big South. And it's like, you just add in more stuff to it. It's like, girl, they already going through it. Don't add that. That's why I gave, actually, I would say a four and a half. That little situation that happened, I think it was unnecessary, okay? Um, but overall, it was really, really good. I really like this story. Okay, the second one is Let Me Hold You. And that is Leland and Kim. So you have Leland, he is an NBA, um, you know, basketball player. And he volunteers um at like a uh what do you call it like a non-profit you know organization and the non-profit is actually ran by like his nemesis this guy um well, i forget that boy's name but like they never got along but he's like i really love you know the um i really love 
the outreach that, you know, the program um, entails when it comes to, you know, children, especially black children underprivileged. And they have activities and basketball and it's really good, you know, for the community. But then he meets Kim and Kim is like the director of the um, organization. But Kim is the mother of his like nemesis, right? And then Leland has this thing. He like older women. Okay, like the older, the better. And this boy, he not even 30 yet. I think he like 28 or something like that. But he like women that's like 40, 50, okay? And Kim is in her, no, Kim is, I don't think Kim 40 yet. I think Kim 38. Um, She just had a child like really, 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 really young. And, you know, they have to kind of keep their relationship on the down low because she's like, first of all, you real young. You and my song don't get along. You know, I'm the director at, you know, the place that you're volunteering. It's just not a good look. But girl, her story, this one was deep because it deals with some domestic violence. Um... That's like the major thing. It's that domestic violence. It's not like over poor or anything like that. But there is some serious bits. And obviously, clearly, there's some romance. And I really did like uh, this story. And I like uh, Leland. Next is Let Me Show You. And this is Nolan McLean and Bridget. Now, Nolan, he is into directing and filming like that, like industry, the media industry. And Bridget is a up and coming actress. And Big South and No Nolan, they have a production company together and they are um, you know, producing and directing their first like movie or whatever. <coughs> Excuse me. And in comes Bridget. And clearly Nolan and Bridget, they get together. The thing with Nolan. He don't deal with black girls. He don't deal with us. He, he always dealing with these white women. And the reason why he dealt with them, it was a stupid reasoning. And I won't spill it for you, but it was like, that don't even make sense, bro. But he's attracted to Bridget. And, you know, she's attracted to him too. But she's like, you only date white girls. So like, what do you want with me? You know, but because they're interested in film and they're interested in their um, careers, you know, they hit it off and clearly they have a relationship. Now, with her story, her past is, it wasn't good. She grew up in, um, you would say, in a group home. Because her and Joe, they're best friends. They met in a group home. Um, and, yeah, it was some neglect and some abuse. She moves to California and, you know, she starts her career and all that. But <clears throat> I would say Bridget, she is the one that's real. What is Bridget? Bridget is, she's real tell like it is. She's fun. Um, she's the one that's going to bring you out the house and y'all, we go go to the club and we go, you know, we go talk to the guy. She like that. She's one of those friends, okay? She brings it out of you. Um, really loved her. Really loved Nolan. The next one is Let Me Please You. And this is a family novella because the um McLean brothers they have one sister named um Catherine but they call her Kat and Kat works with um Nolan I believe she is like his uh what do you assistant he also owns like a, a boutique and they're like really really close now Kat husband he been cheating on her since they got together they've been knowing each other since they were like in high school and um yeah now, because these brothers are, you know, they famous and all of that, they got to have bodyguards, right? Well, in comes their bodyguard, Tommy. And Tommy, he he like Debo size, okay? He real, just think of Debo, like real, real, real big, but no shade to Debo. Debo ain't got no looks. Tommy got some looks. Tommy fine, okay? And they become attracted to each other, but just like Leland and Kim's story, they have to keep it on a down low too because her brothers don't play. Her brothers like, you know how br big brothers are. They don't want you with no man. They ain't thinking you're doing nothing. She like, I've been married. So clearly I've been doing something. I know what I'm supposed to do. But Tommy like, look, y'all brothers, they, you know, 
kick in and take names. I ain't trying to lose my job. I also ain't trying to get jumped or beat up. So look, we if we go do this, we I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I like you. I know you like me. It's just complicated. And then you see how it goes. This one was really good. I love the way it ended. Um, all of these, you get closure. You honestly get closure. And then the last one is Let Me Free You. This one is about Neil and Sage. Now, Neil and Nolan, they're twin um, brothers. And Neil, he, he to kind of, you would say, screw up of the family. But there's a reason why um you know he's into gambling and drinking but he had a bad 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 relationship his pre-relationship with um his you know girlfriend it didn't end well and he such a sensitive person he just he didn't take it well um and that's why he you know reverted to you know the gambling and the alcohol but sage um sage is a makeup artist and sage bridget and um joe they're friends right and like sage is a bomb makeup artist okay like she can do a face she can be the face right but sage is actually um gonna get deported to uh liberia and in order for her not to get deported she needs to get married so in comes you and they get married and you're thinking it's going to be like, oh, you know, not no strings attached. It's like, look, I, I need to get married to you because I need to stay in the country. But they end up falling for each other. They honestly do. And then you see, again, how it goes. This one probably was my favorite. And it's so, this one is the most fairy tale ish because it's like, I mean, what, when would, like, you know, would that honestly happen that way? You know what I mean? But for some reason, Sage, I just loved her so much. Sage is a woman that is very insecure because her last relationship, and even before her last relationship, but all her relationships, the men, they just kind of hit it and quit it. She always says, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a big girl and I'm real loud and people think I'm ghetto. And that messes up her self-esteem. And Neil like, uh-uh, baby. No, uh-uh. You are more than that. You are beautiful. You can be as loud as you want to. Like, everything about you. Oh, my goodness. He just makes her feel just so wanted. And she needed that. She honestly did. Out of all these, I keep on going back to listening to their story. But I would say, out of the three girls, I do like Joe the most. I think I do like Joe the most, but something about that Sage. I think I like her because she's so sweet and shy, but then she also got a little edge to her a little bit. I just, girl, I love Sage so much, but this one, like I said, probably was my favorite and it was the most fairy ish you know, of them all. So yeah, guys, that is a breakdown of, you know, the books and of the characters. I would highly, highly, highly recommend y'all read this and i know y'all probably aren't ready y'all the one put me on it okay this series was a highlight of my month now i'ma say i like to read these or listen to these rather in the comfort of my home because it's romance so you know it's gonna have some stuff and girl the sex up in here is it's a lot all right and you know with the narrating they be you know they do sound effects and all that so oh um, girl i was in the office last week and i had my airpods on and they was talking some stuff girl they was talking some stuff and i'm up here smiling like they talking to me i got my boss looking at me like you know what's going on lex like what's and i'm like oh nothing girl was so shamed i, I said uh, uh you gotta read these at home girl you gotta read these at home because again they they real sexy but one thing i love about alexandria house although like i said it's like the romance fairy tale-ish but it's still realistic you still have a storyline i love how she connects the characters through her books you also can read them by you know standalones i mean she just gives you like everything you know what i mean when it comes to you know the romance also i love the fact that the black characters they're not struggling you know what I mean? A lot of times, you know, it's a stereotype, but, you know, with 
black characters, you know, they, they don't have no money or, you know, they got a little baby daddy issue or something like that. And they finances toe up, you know, all of that. No, these, this family, they, they have wealth, you know what I mean? South, although he is a rapper, but he is an entrepreneur, you know what I mean? He write, produce, he do all his stuff. I'm talking like he a real rapper girl, but you know what I mean? Um, you know, you have, um, what? Leland, he's an NBA player. You got Nolan, he um, is a director. And even Neil, Neil is an entrepreneur, also is a songwriter. So he gets, you know, money for the songs he writes. Also, he owns a bookstore. I mean, so again, these, they have, you know, well, yeah, I just, I love that about her. She makes our characters, you know, not struggle. And even like with the Roman University series, those girls are professors and they don't have any, you know, financial problems, you know what I mean? So, and then also too, these women, you know, it's a happy, it's a happily ever after. Um, so again, you just get the best of both worlds. I love her characters are, you know, just, she just, girl, I can gush about her. Okay. Yeah, guys, that is it when it comes to this review of Alexandria House. Again, if you guys have not read her, I would urge you to. Also, if you guys have read her, give me some more suggestions, okay? I want to now read like her whole catalog. Yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. And I'll be back with more Black Books. Bye.